Hi everybody, I am back with Penny. And last time I talked about the Kyoto Brothers, the killer Kyoto Brothers and the killer clowns from outer space. Last time I just briefly mentioned killer clowns from outer space. This time it is all about killer clowns from outer space. So a few years back when I was running the Graphation Film Festival with my partner Andrew, he and I got to know the Kyoto Brothers through our friend Sam. So thank you to Sam, thank you to the Kyotos, and thank you to Andrew for a great time in my life. I've since moved on and I'm doing YouTube videos, but with that I wanted to share the Kyoto's sharing about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now this was part of, um, like I said, we already shared their sort of home movies section and this is them sharing, Penny's reaching for the lights. So this is them sharing uh, some back, behind the scenes information, all that kind of stuff, some clips and things from Killer Clowns from Outer Space that we showed at the Hive Gallery and Studios. Also, thank you to Nathan uh, Cartwright and the King Bee himself for hosting this stuff. And I will also post links to uh, some interviews that they did. The Hive has their own YouTube channel, which you should check out. And on that channel, they did some interviews, sort of a backstory type of thing about the uh, Kyoto's sort of telling their story, similar to what you see here, but in more depth. Again, forgive the poor quality camera work. We were just filming it in a dark gallery and it wasn't really planned for anything, just kind of my own personal use, but I want to share it with you. Thank you guys. No! What happened was they had the they had the car on a cable and they were gonna tow the car and then the car was the cable was gonna release and it was gonna fly over after they gained some speed. But there was a sandbag in front of the, in front of the car's wheels as a safety, so it wouldn't roll prematurely. It was on a it was on a slight hill. So they said, okay. They started pulling it, and immediately the sandbag stopped the car from rolling. The cable snapped, and it just rolled down the hill like a runny nose. And it just barely had enough momentum to even break through the wall. I wished it didn't break through the wall. Then we would have had a second take. It had just enough momentum to just kind of, and if you look at it, it just falls over. It was supposed to fly into the air. Big disappointment. Just get it over, but snap it, snap it out. Low budget filmmaking, got one shot. And then we had another great gag. We had this really great effects, uh, who you talk over? Uh, effects fabricator. <coughs> We actually built an outrigger on the car, oh, no, this is and, and, and the clown, this performer was sitting in this outrigger, and he had a little control in his hand, and he was able to slide forward and slide back, move into the car, move out of the car, and we were shooting this thing live on location with a, with a camera car, shooting this car going down the road with a clown banging into him, floating in midair with, with uh, headlights on his feet. We shot it once. He lit the characters and no light went on the background. So when the dailies came back, all you saw was the car and the clown against the black background. We might, as well, a sound stage. we might as well shot it on a sound stage against a black curtain. There was no production value at all. It was awful. So then I, uh, so I wanted to reshoot it, so I kind of sped up the shooting of everything else. If I had to take a day for something, I did it in half a day. So little by little, I gained some time so that we had a half a day in the schedule to reshoot this thing. So then we had it. A half a day at night, we were going to shoot, reshoot it. They found another location in the park, and we lit it properly. We, we lit the background so you can see it. I was in the camera car. We're shooting this thing, and uh, we got the dailies back. The road was so bumpy, everything was bouncing around. So the, so the camera was bouncing all the time, and we were using long lenses to get close up, and the lenses were bouncing around. It was awful. It was crap. Like so it was, it was out of the movie. It was, it was, uh, we couldn't cut a sequence out of it. And then yeah. Charlie went back with the editor and salvaged. Uh, I was so disappointed. And I said, forget it. Cut it out of the movie. Then Charlie said, no, no. He wanted to do something with it. So he worked with the editor. And he salvaged that, that entire sequence. But you know, when I look at it now, the first shot you see is the car coming around in the effect shot with the stop motion uh, clown floating. So instead of revealing it, as a glance to a clown next to the car, the cut that was used was, it gives, the gives it away. It, it reveals the clown floating, you know, next to the clown, uh, the, uh, the car in a, in a rear projected stop motion sequence. Um, that should have been put later on. But again, it was such a mess. It's, it's amazing it was even in there in the first place. Because the reason it had to go in there, because it was the, it was the, the original concept of the whole film to begin with, 
you know, a clown on a mountain rope. Oh, it was really supposed to be the pre-title sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it was a, it was destined for, for failure. I mean, the, the, the uh, that that shot didn't work out, and, and uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. car crash didn't work out. So that whole that whole sequence seemed to have a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. maybe we, maybe we'll, we'll do that in the sequel if we ever get to do it. We'll do it with CG. We know it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> We, 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 it would have been better off to have, you know, had we had the budget, we had Gene Noir and a Fantasy 2, we could have done a miniature car and a miniature cliff and shot it off and probably had a better... Well, it, it's true. Yeah. I mean, uh, actually, at the end of the film, when the ice cream truck breaks through the, uh, the, uh, the wall, we had a plan to do it live. We had Philip Foreman, our production designer, our, our art director, uh, building... I, a wall that was going to break away, and we were going to put the car through it. And as we're doing it, Gene Warren was on yeah. the set with us. Yeah, he comes over to me and says, "Hey, we're wasting we're wasting a lot of this in miniature, and it'll look great, and you, you can get on with shooting the rest of it for that night." We so had we, to. So we agreed with him, and then what we did was we took the broken wall that we were going to break through, and we just dressed the uh, truck in it as if it had just broken through. So we picked it up from there, and then Gene and his crew they created an entire thing in miniature. And uh, it's beautiful. Well, we were going to make the truck. We were going to, we had to make the miniature ice cream truck anyway because Clownzilla was me in a suit and I had to pound it. And we were going to blow it up. So Gene says, well, I'll have it crash through a wall too in miniature instead of the full size. The right speed and the right scale. So everything you had to do is stay fine and had to do it really quick. Shadows on each other. It, it was just awesome. And it was a great gag. You can see in the video, it works. You see how everything goes black? On film, you see the wall. You see the wall, you see the, the floor, you see the platform. Actually, not the wall behind it so much. You actually see the platform in the foreground. The they're walking on a platform. And and look, they were they were nearly blind in this suit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they couldn't, and they all looked down at their feet <laughs> because they were afraid they were going to fall. So they gave them funny walks to kind of justify that they weren't running. But you can see how it works. It looks like they're on the tightrope. And now they're going on a tightrope upstairs. Well, they were never supposed to walk up that far. Our heroes yeah. walked up that. Because the reveal is, yeah, our heroes walked up that thing, and it's a joke when you kind of hand with them, and you follow them go up over the spike. Oh, you're you're right, because... The stairs weren't measured for clown feet. Yeah. Door on the floor. And they came up through the floor. And I had them get this rig so that we could start the shot sideways. So it looks like they're going through a regular vertical door. And then you turn the camera around and find out that they're coming up from the floor. Well, we had this rig for five weeks on the six week shoot. And we're going to use it on the last week. The week before, they sent it back to, uh, they sent it back to Los Angeles. The day we needed it. So we didn't, we didn't have the rig to do that. So they made shifted. They took two, uh, two camera heads, put them together so they can get the, the, the double tilt. And it just it awful. didn't work. And then the set that they were supposed to have ready, the paint was still wet on it. So when they, the actors were walking on it, they got paint on their costumes. It was just like a, a screw job. Now, well, that we were shooting during the day. The art department <laughs> were painting at night. It was cold and damp at night, so the paint wasn't drying for our day of shooting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're scared to death. <laughs> this, pop. this is the night I got into that group for a morning with Craig Wardell, and you had to come and separate. You know, some people question how they moved, and they could have moved scarier, they could have done this, they could have done that. I don't know. There's something so low-key and dumb about what they do, and yet they're still frightening. 
I think if I had made them do scary things, it wouldn't have been really scary. The fact that they're so inept and mundane and flat, I think plays into the kind of scariness. It's like a low-key scare. I don't know. I keep on questioning the take on it. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and check out my other Kyoto's video. And be sure to check out some awesome practical special effects. These guys are the best at it. Thank you to the Kyoto brothers. Really great to know you all. I can say it's been a pleasure. I've been able to visit the studio, super fun. Thank you so much. Thank you for Penny for hanging out. Thank you guys.